think that it would turn into what the hell it turned into when we started doing this? I mean, I I didn't know. I feel like the match against Bakuga went really well my way, yeah. especially for like the first one. Right. The my first like coming out yeah, and yeah. like whatever. So so that it going really well for me. I don't know if I was anticipating that. Um, but I did. I think I was anticipating like, yeah, I want to play. I want to play this game. Yeah, yeah. I think I like movie trivia. And you caught the bug. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm not classy. I've had this sweatshirt for a long time, and pretty sure there's tomato sauce on my shirt. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about my guest, who is classy, classy Clark Wolf. Clark is a good friend of mine. Clark is someone who is a straight shooter, always tells you how it is, and this interview is no different. She talks to me about everything going on in, in her life. She talks to me about things that I was curious about, the way that, that her and I met, the, her journey throughout this space. It's really interesting stories, and she never, uh, she's just one of those people, you ask her a question, she gives you an answer. She doesn't try to skate around it, she just tells you what is on her mind, and that is why I love her, and I hope you guys love this interview as much as I love conducting it. Enjoy the one and the only Classy Clark Wolf. This episode of One-on-One -on -One with Christian Harlow is brought to you by Rode Microphones and My Rode Reel. We've been talking about this for a little bit here. It's uh, the world's largest short film competition. Right now, there are over 1,000 1,000 short films battling to win $1 million worth of prizes, and you can help by voting for your favorite films. There's drama, there's comedy, sci-fi, they're all in there, so head on over to www.myroadreel.com. Don't really need the www, you guys know that by now. I mean, you've been using the internet long enough, but it's myroadreel.com. You watch some films, you vote now for your favorite. You like movies, you like new things, you like helping people, go do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff, and uh, I have been really blown away by the responses that we've gotten from, I just had, I had Tom Dinino on the show, uh, I had Ken Napsock, I had John Roca, and it was like the crew that you normally get to see a lot, but really dive deep into who these people are, why you like them so much, and even though I've had these celebrity guests of Joe Manganiello and Leah Thompson, guests that I'd love to be on, it's the crew one-on-ones that people really have been digging and interesting. So I figured, put the celebrity guests that we have on Collider Live, that'd be fun. And if I can really sit down and talk to my friends and my colleagues and people I've worked with, um, then I'm gonna do that. And the person I'm sitting here with today is someone of all that caliber. She's my friend, she is someone I've worked with, she is a colleague, she is uh, someone I admire, and she is the classiest of class. Classy Clark Wolf. Hello, Clark. Oh, hello, Christian. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. It's always nice to see you, though. I think oh. you and I have... Uh, I don't know why. Why do we get along so well? What is that, do you think? Because we're both sassy. I think that's probably it. <laughs> that's true. Sassy and classy. It's sassy and classy. Well, one of us. You're the classy one. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I would not say I call myself classy, and nor do I ever think anyone else called me classy. <laughs> Um, but no, we've always just kind of had that rapport. I think the first time I met you was during... I remember this was the Schmo show. You just came to watch when we were at Toad Hop. It's like 2013. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right, because uh, I was interested in launching and trying to launch a digital brand, and yeah. Ellis is a friend of, was a friend of mine uh, previously. So, um, so yeah, so he said, come watch the show. And that yeah. was, yeah, so I do, yeah, that's crazy. And I crazy. said, I said, who is that? I said, who is that over there? And then you and I started, we both worked at the, at uh, well, did shows over at Geek Nation for a little bit. Oh, that's right. Because you were, that's, I think that's where we first really started yes, kind of right. getting to know each other. Because you guys would record record your Star Wars show after the bloodcast sometimes. Yes, we did far, so, far and away. Yeah, far, so it was just away. like passing in the, we would finish and y'all would be coming. Yeah, we knew each other from mm -hmm. like things that we had done. And I think you had, you had just done, you were maybe in the midst of AMC mm -hmm. or had done AMC and, and then I don't think I was involved with it yet. No, you weren't. But we were just talking and... Um, and then I had said to you, um, you know, I can remember you and Ryan Turk. We uh -huh. sat down because I was starting the Schmoes Nothing. That's right. That's right. And then we just got, we were potentially working together. And now look at us today. Look at us go. Look at us today. I know. So you, I mean, since we, we talked on the Harloff podcast that I used to do, and I, and I told Clark before we started here that um, we'll probably cover some of the stuff because I want some of the Collider audience here because she's got such a fascinating story and, and just kind of where she comes from and, and her drive and her motivation. So I wanna, I'm going to reiterate to the to the people who may have seen it or heard it before, but tell us again where you're from. Mm -hmm. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> I thought mm -hmm. there was more. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm from, from Atlanta, Atlanta and live in, in you were born in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. I I grew up in Atlanta. And, Georgia kid. Yes, and uh, and lived there um, until I did my first year of college in New York City at Marymount Manhattan. Okay. Um, didn't love New York, so went back to Atlanta uh, with the intention of leaving again. Um, but I enrolled at Georgia State University in their film program, okay. and I really really liked it. And Georgia State is downtown Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, and so it was a city vibe and um and they had a great film program and i got a scholarship um and so i was like okay well guess for I, I yeah for wow. yeah well i got a scholarship um georgia used to have this thing called the hope scholarship where if you maintained a 3.0 gpa you could go to college for free is public oh, wow. college okay cool um and uh so so you're i were a smart kid <laughs> yeah 3.0 yeah you were a smart kid I mean... to, compared to me i was i was lucky enough to stay in school because i was cutting jokes and trying to make everyone laugh and not paying attention yeah. so yeah, I, I, I could have been a lot. I could have tested a lot higher yeah. if I had applied myself, which I didn't. But um, I'm similar. I actually graduated from college with a 3.3, but it was, but it, it was, it took a long time to get there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, yeah. Life anyway. It's true. I mean, so life took you. I mean, and it's, it's crazy how you think your path's going to go one way, and it just veers into another direction altogether. So true. So you're in, you're in Georgia. What did you dislike about New York? Uh, it Do you just still dislike it? it? Well, it's not that I did. It's so it just wasn't a place that I would prefer to live. I understand. Living yeah. in New York is hard. Like yeah. I, it's not a criticism. It's it's hard. There's no, you know, if you're living in the city or even even in like Brooklyn or wherever, you know, there's it's. At the time, too, it's interesting because at the time, um, everything wasn't on demand, right. meaning like ordering, you know, Amazon Prime where they just drop things. Right, the right, next right. day right. like wasn't a thing so so you're having to either pay for crazy delivery or you're having to schlep groceries or this or that and mm -hmm. you know the weather is intense it and is. when you're on your own like I didn't have any immediate fan I didn't have any family or close friends who were there at the same time right. either so it was just wasn't just wasn't for me and it is and it, even though it's only about you know two and a half or two hour plane ride or whatever it is from Atlanta it's still it's culture shock I mean it's 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 very different because I, I went to school in Florida mm -hmm. Florida State and that was very different for me um, because it is sure inside of the college itself there's people are up to times and stuff too, but it's in the outs it's it's a very different kind of more laid back southern thing and I wasn't used to that and I'm sure it was maybe the opposite for you too getting to the city especially college kid it's expensive to live there they put you in a box probably and yeah I can understand that for sure yeah it was also I mean I would say like I grew up uh, in the Orange County of Atlanta so mm -hmm. it, it, so picture like you know suburbs and malls and it's a car town yeah. you know what I mean so actually it, it wasn't as much as like and also keep in mind you know I do have family that lives in Long Island. My grandparents lived in New York uh, okay. for a very long time. So I mean, the New York side actually, I thought I would love because I, you had roots. I had roots. Yeah. Visited so much theater background, like the whole deal. Um, it just just, just ultimately wasn't for, wasn't for me. But LA, on the other hand, like I got here, and by the end of the for a visit, yeah. And by the end of the first day, I was like, okay. oh. Yeah. When did you visit? 2008. And you were just visiting a friend. Yes. Okay, and just come out and say, hey. Were you, did you have the intention of feeling it out, or were you just going to visit a, a buddy? Was it a was it a boyfriend? No, no, my friend Jason, who's like a brother to me, okay. and he's a he's a school year older, so he was out and um and he was living out here on his like college Emerson. He went to Emerson College, and so he they did this like LA program where people moved out. But um, so I was like, well, I go to New York every year for my spring break. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't I? Jason's out there. I've never been to California. Why don't I just go for a visit? Sure. Not with the intention of going. I actually wasn't even in the back of your mind. No, wow. I had never been. I thought, I truly thought that Los Angeles was like entourage. Okay. Like I, I was like, yeah. I will not fit in there. I will no like it's all models and like it's all right. it, it, it's like I, a pocket. Yeah, a small like pocket. I, oh, it is yeah. so not like that. Right. Um, but that's what I truly thought LA was. Um, and then when I got here, I was like, oh, regular people. Are here right. Too. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you I, I kind of felt the same way. But you, so you get here, you. So where does Jason take you though? That you you say, well, whoa, wait a minute, this is so different than what I thought it was going to be. And yeah, I want to move here now. How does that happen? You it, said within a day. It, yeah, it was wow. just it was just the vibe. It was like, you know, I went to the Brea Tar Pits or mm -hmm. I went to I don't know, he lived in West Hollywood, so just like walking around West Hollywood, you know. And and also I tell people all the time, 
LA and Atlanta actually don't feel that different to me. The industry is different, yes, and the um, you know the beach part is different. But aside from that, it's a car town. You know, different neighborhoods equate different ways, and um, it actually was a pretty easy and smooth transition. So. I kind of fit in pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. See, for me, it took me a little bit. Yeah. It took me a while. You you settled in from the second you got here. Yep. Did you? What did you do as far as um as far as work? Oh well, I moved out here uh, when the economy crashed oh, in no. the summer of two thousand eight. Oh wow. Uh, and so. God. And and so if you if people will remember in the early um, two thousand nine the Writers Guild was was on strike or was uh, striking yeah, was and, and re- about to strike and then they they went on strike in two thousand nine I'm was pretty it, sure it was it was around two thousand seven two thousand eight because maybe they went they did it again but the reason why I know that is because I wrote a pilot and I tried it was two thousand eight because it was then I moved out here during that okay because also. okay because. Um, I had written a pilot, shot the pilot in 2007, and when we when we got it done in 2008, mm-hmm. they were on strike. Well, so it, maybe it was eight to nine. Yeah, yeah. It, it must have been because, um, or maybe there was more than one because I remember. The strike happened, the economy crashed, and as a result of the economy crashing, banks were not lending. Production was like f- was it was, was a mess. slow it was out a mess. here. Yeah, yeah. So so the reason I tell that story is because um, even getting a restaurant job, which you think like you're like okay, you moved to a new town, like you can get a job at a yeah. restaurant or whatever. Well, now all these people, when the economy Everybody was getting, Every, not just the struggling exactly. actor, right, right, Everyone right. Everyone was laid off. Right. Everyone who had master's degrees and all these was like trying to work right. at a restaurant, right? And so, um, so I, but I got a hostessing job at a place in Beverly Hills, um, and I started interning. And what place um, in Beverly Hills? Can you say? Um, I'll just well, if if you want me to talk about it, I'll say I won't say the name, but it was a very upscale. Yeah. European Asian fusion restaurant. Did you like it? Or no. You... <laughs> oh, no. No. It was it. Awful. awful. It was a miserable experience. And, and it was I... the LA you thought you couldn't fit into. Totally. Right. 100%. And they made me, I was telling the story the other day, like they made me a white girl from Atlanta wear essentially a kimono. Oh. And I was oh, like, man. now? Are there photographs like, of this? I, probably somewhere <laughs> that no one wants to see. Instagram but that. I was like, yeah. people would lose their shit now right. if like they walked in. But the, it, to be fair, it was a family owned restaurant. The family yeah, asked us they, to right. dress Maybe this way. Just because of the culture. Or yeah, stuff. Yes. I understand. But yeah, 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 yeah. It, it just was, it was bizarre and terrible. How long terrible. did you work there for? A long, too long. Like on and off yeah. for the first, I'd say maybe maybe four years. Wow. But not consistently. So like the first year, year and a half, that's actually not true. I need to back up. In 2009, the fall of 2009, yeah. I got a job with a brand activation company and went out on tour with U2. So yeah. How do you skip over that? So, <laughs> So it was crazy. Wait, so you met Bono? Uh, I didn't ever like shake his okay. hand, but, but you, like but he was around. around. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get that gig? Let's start so, there. We can get back to the kimono okay. in a second. <laughs> so basically, um, uh, I this is a crazy story. I was rear-ended on Sunset Boulevard mm-hmm. one Sunday afternoon. Just but, driving. Just driving. And and it wasn't a horrible accident, but he he popped my, yeah. my um, uh, whatever that's called, cars. Yeah, the, the with the rear bumper. Bumper. He okay. popped my bumper really. I mean, good. So the car needed to be fixed, and this guy Mike, he's like, uh, "What do you got these Georgia plates for?" And I was like, "The guy that hit you." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, I just, I just moved out here." And he goes, "What are you like a model or something?" And I was like, "Do I look like a fucking model?" And right. he was like, "Well, what are you doing here?" And I was like, "Well, I, w- I just went to film school and I uh, want to work in the film business." And he goes, "Do you have any radio experience?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "Okay, send me your resume." Like this totally L.A. Yeah. schmoozy story. Story. Right. Don't 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 call your insurance company. I'll give you a gig. Exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, yeah. That's exactly it. Right. And uh, so so he. But Mike, I ended up. This is like so true. Ended up moving into Mike's house as his nanny. Wow. Like six months later. Did he pay he, for your car? 
Uh, oh yeah, he fixed okay, it. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, he introduced me. He did not get me a job, but he introduced me, passed my stuff on to K Rock, and then there wasn't really anything there, which is a radio station here yeah, in Los yeah, Angeles. Sure. And then he, but th- but we kept in touch because because he was like, "Do you babysit?" Okay. And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Well, I have a five year old. Like, would you want to babysit mm-hmm. for me, make some cash?" And I was like, "Yes." So um, then he was like, "You know, you might like my friend Donna, who started this marketing company." And I was like, "Great!" So I interviewed. I got hired. Right. And one of their clients was BlackBerry. Remember uh, BlackBerry? Of course, I had one. BlackBerry uh-huh. was the sponsor. I refused of, to give mine away for the longest time. I loved the. Key- yeah. I love a keyboard. Yeah. I love a keyboard. Me I'm too. just saying it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, BlackBerry was the sponsor of U2's, U2's 360 tour, uh-huh. and BlackBerry was um, hired by this company to do all of the. Oh wow! Look all of that. the thing, put okay. it on tour, put it on the road, all the BlackBerry element. Sure. So I went out on tour and managed brand ambassadors, and but I got the I got the you yeah. know U.S. leg. Okay. People went to Europe and did. But you got to watch all the shows. Stuff. Totally. Oh yeah. And I still like last month I had tickets for the U2, and I still one of my favorite bands. I've never seen them. Oh really? And I had tickets. I don't know what the hell happened. I you know one year old couldn't couldn't make it. Um, but that's all. You how many times have you seen them in concert? I mean, I we did a lot of dates. So you it was saw, like maybe. 10 dates Did you ever get tired of the music? Oh, totally, yes. I did not watch it every night. Okay. But you know what is funny? Their opening act, so it was the the second half, like um, when we got to Arizona, Vegas, LA, uh, Rose Bowl, like that was, and then Vancouver, that was Black Eyed Peas. That was like the Hollywood. They were the opening act. That's cool, look at that. Um, But before that, it was Muse. Wow. And guess, they had not, they had, they were, they didn't blow up yet though. They had not blown up yet. And, um, And I remember watching Watching Muse play to empty stadiums. That's crazy. Because no one gave no, a shit. Right, right. Opening act. That's, look, and I was t- I told this story recently. I think you might have been on the show when I when I told you. I don't know, but when uh, when I was, it was myself, my now wife who was my girlfriend at the time, Bonnie Somerville, and my friend Adam, and we went to this place. It was this party that Bonnie got us into, and it, there was, I don't know, 150, 200 people in the room. Like, oh, they're gonna have this girl come out and, and perform. And it was Lady Gaga. Uh-huh. It was before she blew up or anything too. And I, right, yeah. And at the time when I heard her, I'm like, yeah, she's good. Because Bonnie was like, you gotta listen to her. She's amazing. I'm like, she's good. She's trying to be Madonna. And now I think she's, I yeah. think she's incredible. But it's funny how you can see these people and then realize it's kind of a cool story though too. Oh, yeah. Because that way you can say I saw them when they were playing in front of six people. Totally. Um, so that's I'm surprised you don't talk about that. More. That's the first time I've ever heard yeah. that. Yeah, that's a pretty. I guess I, it just feels like so long. Ago. It was, but how long? How, I mean, how long ago? I mean, so you, Eight, how long were you doing it? So end of so second half of two thousand nine okay. through two thousand ten. Right. I wasn't there the whole year, um, and that's when I decided. Tired of going on the road. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It will because also it was like. I was, I even then was very career focused and it's like, yeah. okay, well, if I want to work in the entertainment industry, none of this is a cool story, but like being on the road, right. meaning that's not, that's road people. It's like that's yeah, their job. Their it's, job is to go on the road. Their crew. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Which is great people, and some fine. Some die for it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but that was not making movies right. or making television. So you didn't, you hadn't found that and you said, okay, look, I'm getting experience. I'm paying the bills. Yes. Um, and then you give it. Where, what area are you living in at that point? Santa Monica. Oh, still, that's a trek too. Yeah, so. it was. It was. A, this was the thing. Was like figuring out your LA yeah. vibe because right. I thought for sure, similar to how I thought for sure I was going to be a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought for sure I was going to love Santa Monica. Santa Monica was my place. And then I finally go there with my best friend Sarah, and uh, I hated living there. I yeah. hated it. Why not I hated only, you so much? Well, not only was it so f- isolated, yeah. Santa Monica is like it's hard to. Get get anywhere it is i live close there yeah but the problem is that there's a cutoff that's right and it, once you hit that highway that's it right. just backs everything yep. up yeah it, it, it kills it and also the the type of people that live in santa monica in my experience it's kind of old money but it's definitely Boosh. money yeah and if you're a 23 year old broke person it's like ugh, it's, yeah it, it just just, makes you look around like i get it you have money and i'm i gotta go get ramen noodles totally yeah. it was very unpleasant but then yeah. i moved to culver city and was very happy. Is that where you are now? No, okay. I'm in the valley now. Okay. Um, so I knew that. Um, so Culver City, you're living there for a bit, but then, but this is in 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 between. You're going back to the kimono place. 
Uh, okay, so Kimono, so Kimono Place was leading up to um, working for Encompass, mm-hmm. which was the marketing mm-hmm. place, and then I finished there, and um, I uh, I started doing pr- I was doing liquor promos, so like I would wear stupid outfits yeah. and I wasn't selling anything, but I would sample things at bars and stuff. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, see. and yeah, um, yeah. and then. You must have hated that. Oh, I fucking hated I can't, it. I can't imagine oh, you. Because it was I, awful. I know exactly the yeah. job you're talking about. You go into the bar and there's and there's the ladies that come up and they give you the samples yep. and everything too. And you get just every kind of good dude, but every kind of scummy dude. It's awful. Everybody you must get hit on by gross people all the and time. And also these girls who are doing this job aside like beside me are truly models. Right. Like and they're and these outfits we had to wear were like not flattering okay. for if you're not a model. And it was just like I looked insane. Like, I looked crazy. Sometimes we, there were feathers involved and hats, and sometimes it was, like, beach I, I outfits. I feel like you'd have to drag you kicking and screaming to do something it like that. It was, at the time, really good money. It was. And it was not tip-based, and okay. it, I was dependable. Like, they were hiring me a lot because a lot of girls who do those jobs are kind of flaky, and, and I was like, nope, I know how to do this. I know how to manage. I just I come off say. the road from you, too, right. managing brand ambassadors. Right. So I was like... Like, yeah, I've done this before, you know, on whether it's phones, whether it's liquor, whether it's Yeah, because you whatever. don't ever do anything 50%. No. You go, no matter what it is, you're 110, 120. You don't skate through things. <sighs> whatever the job might be, whether it's the kimono to this, yeah. you're going to put in 110%. It was just, right. it was not my favorite. So then you bail on this and you say, I'm done with this. I can't do it. And now I go back to... Well, these... no, it was always on and off. Oh, okay. Just on and off as as gigs would come up. Sometimes seasons are slow. Sometimes right. they're not. Right. On and off with the hostessing at the restaurant okay. at the kimono mono place um but then i got a job as a i mean kind of you could say assistant but um but guardian there was a gal who was a producer who was producing a show my best friend jason was a director on yeah her daughter was is um a professional actress and her daughter was i want to say 16 or 17 Mm -hmm. at the time and she had just been cast as the lead on a show uh, no, okay. no. Well, somebody people would know, but just by face. Yeah, yeah. They know Cut. her name. They probably know her name. She's a t- predominantly TV actress, okay. um, and she's on a network show now. Okay. Um, so she, um, she, so her mom was like, she just got cast as the lead on this show, uh, and and I, she, her mom was like, I can't go to set with her every day. So we need to find somebody who can like, you know, if she's shooting late at night, like drive her home or and just. You make met sure. this woman through Jason. Yes. Jason. Okay. Got yes. It. Okay. Because Jason was like. Kathy, you are, and Clark. Clark is like a mini you, so okay. you guys are going to like each other. Got it. So then I started working um, for their family, essentially. Mm. I would babysit their little brother, and I would go take to Take her to set Take her stuff. to set, cool. hang out on set, like make sure, you know, like she was taken care right. of and And you're safe. learning stuff while you're on set, I'm sure. Exactly. Too. Yeah. It was also a shitty experience. Not overall, just like in some ways, because for me, I was watching somebody live my dream. Right. Because she was a number one on a genre show, right. which I was super jealous of. Of course, not in a resenty way, but just in like I, a. It's like I want to do this. I know I can do this. How do I get there? Not not be the one taking. And you also, I'm not 17 and right. blonde and yeah. adorable and. People don't realize that kind of stuff. I mean, we're human beings. Of so, course. And especially in the field that we're in, we're always, you know, we we always say take the higher road, and but it's 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 also part of that to say. All right, that person has that. I think that I can do that. I know that I can do that. I believe I can do it even as good, if not better, than that person. And you can strive to have that goal. But I think there's a difference between letting that eat at you, eat at your core, or using it as motivation. That's exactly right. And also recognizing a great opportunity when you have it. I learned so much. And 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 there were a handful of folks that I still recognize every now and again. And and um and it was a great experience. And then when she finished the show and she went to college, I um I started babysitting her little brother more mm-hmm. frequently. And then my mentor, the mom, she got a job in New York and she did not want to sell her house in in this valley. So she said, Will you move in and take care your of it mom, for your mom? No, no, no. Oh, the mom, mom of this mom. family. Okay, yeah. Okay, she said, um, will you move in and take care of it for me so that when we can come we can come back wow. as we want. That's a lot of trust. Uh yeah. yeah. And and also I didn't have to pay rent. Yeah. You know? And so I was like What a deal you get. So that Look was this. so that was the time where I was like, okay, liquor promos. 
Yes, we're doing them. Taking right. musicals. I'm going to do a stage musical that's going to pay up. me nothing, right. but I still am going to get to do, to pursue the things right. that before I would have to maybe say no to. Because you're right, because you're worried about rent and everything else. The problem is, though, with that, though, are you always worried about, like, what's the ticking clock on when they're going to say, okay, now it's time you got to go? I figured I'd had, I had a little bit of time. You did, okay. So it wasn't, it didn't feel like a ticking clock. It just felt like, let's do as much with this now yeah. as I can. And that is why I was able to take AMC Movie Talk when oh, I first got that got job it. because that job did not pay much. And that was like what, 2013? 2013, that's got right. It. And okay. so, but I was able to go, okay, well this is why I am caretaking this house and running these errands and okay. doing all these things is so I can get my foot in doors that pay me yeah. no money, but still there's exposure and um, there, or there's experience or there's whatever. And I mean, it paid like basically nothing, but it paid something, but yeah, so um, so that's how AMC Movie Talk happened. Okay, now how? But how did it happen specifically? Because like you are, you're working at this, or you have this place. You're doing the shots thing. You're going back and forth between these these different jobs, and you're able now yep. to do that. How do you find out about the AMC thing? So, Where does that come from? There was a casting breakdown online, okay. and uh, and I saw John Campia's name on there, and so I actually and and it specifically said they were looking for a host who knew superheroes and you know geek culture and pop culture, um, and that type of movie. And I was like, well, that is me. I know that is me. So I took I copied his name and put it in a Facebook and said, who do we know in common? And we knew one girl in common. Okay. So I messaged her and I was like, listen, this guy, you're friends with him on Facebook. Uh, he's casting for something. I know I am perfect for it. All I am looking for is to break through the noise and to get an audition. It's really smart. And I'll tell you why that's smart. A lot of people don't do that. I like, I do that. Um, I think that that's how you have to people, the common thing that people do, whether it's here or anywhere, right? It's like they sit and they go, I know that I can do this. Why aren't why isn't anyone calling me? Mm -hmm. Why can't I do this? And it's even yesterday I was talking to myself like, in the car, and I'm like, find the angle. Mm -hmm. It's like because it's no one's fault but your own if you can't get it because you might not catch breaks, but it's also what angles did you miss? Yes. So that's a smart that's a smart thing to do. So you play that angle. You go to Facebook. She messages John. Yep. And, and then you set up a meeting. Yep. And we set up an audition. Um, it's right before the Oscars, so okay. it's earlier in the year. Oh, yeah. And then I don't get the job. You didn't get it on the didn't first one. Okay. Didn't get it. And then, What's the meeting like when you guys are talking? Is it, is, is it one of these things to where you're like, okay, I f it felt good there too? He's, yeah. Yeah, he did. Because because I was Chemistry like... Chemistry was fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally fine. And, and also I was like... Listen, this is what I do. I was a film student. I I've been had a subscription to Entertainment right. Weekly since had you I was been on 12. Camera, though, yeah. Yes. You have yes. been on. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I I neglected to mention that lady who was my sort of mentor and the mom of this little girl. She was a daytime talk producer. So mm. she had come from Entertainment Weekly. She had come from Access Hollywood. So she was the one who really pushed me in a hosting direction. Interesting. Um and and at That's the a big thing to leave out. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah. right? That's well, like I mean, Yoda stuff. It was like stuff that I had done before right. um, and stuff that I knew I could do. In college do. you're talking about. Yeah, So you did exactly. stuff in college and then she said to you, hey, maybe because – it is, especially during that time that you're talking about, 2012, that's when the crack it, really started yes, to happen. The yes. boom started to happen at that point. Yes. Um, because that all the personalities you know, whether it's yourself, the Tiffany Smiths, yep. the Maude Garretts, like um, all of us, Schmoes, it, everyone got pushed into yeah. that void around like 2012, 2013. Yes. Yeah. So it was, so she she would like hire me to do little things for, you know, when she could. And then she was like, go out and make a reel. She was like, here's what I need to see from you. I want to see you in front of a, in front of a rock club doing something music focused get a leather jacket get a different look nice. I want to see you doing fitness stuff go to the beach shoot some like video like doing that hosting a segment Does she like get that. a holiday card every year <laughs> <laughs> yeah she you know it's funny because like I have tried to stay in touch with yeah. this family because they really did feel like family to me and then you know just life happens yeah. and hasn't really happened but you know there's no there's no bad blood. It's right. just they've moved on, and they don't they don't need another daughter. You know what I mean? I like, yeah, and so yeah. I was kind of like, okay. Right. Um, but so did all that, and so yes, I had tape, I had stuff. Right. You know, and also I had writing. I had been writing. You know, I wrote in college, and all, meaning um like pop culture commentary yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. So um so he didn't hire me the first time, but then 
uh, like two months later, I got a phone call or email saying like, hey, can you come in? The first girl we hired didn't work out. And we want to put you on the desk and like do a test or something. And um, so when we finished, I was like, yep, okay. Right. So then when we finished, he was like, well, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, yeah, why didn't I get this job the first time? Nice. I literally yeah. asked him that. I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> we just did exactly yeah. the same thing as last time. I'm not better. I'm not worse. I didn't walk out of the first meeting being like, oh, I really messed right. that up. Why do you think it was? Because the other girl was hot. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. 100%. Oh, do I know who the first person was? I have no idea. Okay. I wouldn't even know. Oh, you don't? Okay. I don't think I would know her name. Oh, okay. So it wasn't someone who kind of made a name no, for themselves no, no, no. in the space. No, oh, or if she was, honestly. But I, no one, like in, in the history of like, the movie not talks? Not that I know. No, okay. no, no, no. Got it. Got no, no, no. no. She, she didn't come back through. Um, okay. No. But yeah, he no he hired her because she, she was hot. Okay. Didn't know what she was talking about, I'm sure, in the way that I did. Um, but so yeah, that's why. Okay, and then but he didn't say that. No, to you of course not. He said, not. He right. said oh, hey, I, I, I don't remember. I don't. I honestly don't know. Okay. And I was like, cool. All right. See you later. Then you take the gig. Yeah, of course. And then so it's now because this is the, the early days of movie of the talk. YouTube. Yeah, in the closet. Early days. So you guys are in the, so it's it's you, Amy Rose, Amy, Schnepp. Yes. Schnepp, Schnepp um, was still skyping in at that point. Right. <laughs> and Dennis and, Dennis and John. That's the yeah, team. Yeah. Okay. So and oh, you, and Chrisley, 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 who I just saw the other Aww. day, by the way. So um, and then so Chrisley, of course, is that that she was, and, she was the mainstay. Yes. And then the, he was looking for somebody who could like fill in for her. Yes. When yeah, so so I was like second, but she was she was like f- full time there or right. whatever. Okay. So then that whole thing starts out, and because that show, here's the thing, when AMC Movie Talk started, I remember that it kind of came out of nowhere mm-hmm. because. Schmoes had been around for a little bit, and our live show was kind of picking up. And I remember I started hearing about this AMC movie talk yeah. all the time, and and the crew over there. And we used to have on because Aaron Darling used to yeah. come on, on our show. So that's the first time. This she... was before Aaron, though. It was before Aaron her. was not on AMC. No, okay, so no. she came on when I got let go. Aha. She replaced me. Okay, so let's get into that. Then. Yep. Because so then what happened? Because that's the whole. That's, this is the whole Man of Steel debacle. Sure, thing, right? sure, sure. Okay, is that what? That's where, Is that what happened with the let go first? Is that that? Is that why? No. No. All right. Then then I'm my, my history's thrown off. When did Man of Steel come out? 2013. No, I know, but like what month? It came out in June, May, S- something like that. Early summer. summer. It was summer. What what the what people don't realize is that I was there after that. I went to Comic Con with AMC. Right. It was like not. It had nothing to do with no. it. No. Right. All right. So then, no. so what happens is you're with them. Let's say you start after that second meeting around like March, April, yeah, yeah, of April, 2000, April, April 2013. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're there, and the show at that point it's not every day, right? It is daily. It is daily at this but point. But okay. I was not daily. You would come in kind of like, hey, you're Twice in on a Monday, week or Wednesday, or whatever totally. it is, right? So yeah. you're in there. Now the first part of that is so this this and at the time I guess it's probably doing I don't know a thousand views two thousand views or something I think we were maybe up to like twenty thousand oh, really? views I think it was pretty because the Amy Rose John Dennis and um, the other oh Chrisley yeah they had established something okay I was not number one okay I was you not... came in where they already it was it was successful correct and they were starting to go it in was the, building in correct the, or got it got it so yes. you, you were there. For the initial build, and then so let's say twenty thousand people are mm-hmm. watching. Now, for someone who had just done some, you know, you're you're do, you're doing tape. You weren't in. You didn't really know the YouTube culture yet. Uh, nope. So you get thrown into it because that's really that's thrown into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Got to be overwhelming. It's we already know now. Uh, it, it's tough for a lot of people in general yeah. to be in that space. Very hard for women to be in that space. Mm-hmm. Do you pay attention to any of the comments coming in up top here? At, well, I think at first everyone does because yeah. it's like, whoa, or it's like, oh, you know, like, this is weird. Right. Um, but but not for long. Right. Do you know what I mean? Were, how, were the comments were the comments 50-50 positive, negative? Was it more positive than negative? Well, keep in mind at this point, too, the hosts who had been on the show had not been encouraged to do much talking okay. um, outside of the scripted. You weren't hosting, though, were you? Oh, yes, I oh, was. you were hosting. I you was were... hired to be a host. You were not I a was not a commentator. Oh, no. I thought you were you brought you in a correspondent. So oh, I didn't know that. I started chiming in. Okay. And when you were not supposed to. Correct. Uh-huh. Did you get a talking to for it? Oh. <laughs> No, but okay. it wasn't live at the time, so I would get cut out. Mm. 
Specifically, I remember one instance where, like, we brought up Guillermo, Guillermo, I brought up Guillermo del Toro, and I was like, this was before Pacific Rim, and I was like, he he's gonna be huge. Like, he, I mean, he's already done a bunch of stuff, of course, right. but, like, he he's the guy, like, that's, and, and it got cut out, and... Oh wow! Yeah, okay. And I specifically it, remember because I was like, "That was a good contribution." Right, and then, and then do you say anything about it? Or you no. just say, I'm, "Okay," because you're just you're hosting and you're like, "It's my job." It's just your job to host. You were brought on to host. The, and the... to be fair to John, he sometimes yeah. encouraged me to chime to in. Chime in, yeah. I mean, he did that quite often when when I was when when I, I would see him. Well, that was after me. That was after. So you. Okay. so this is not me getting big for my britches, but I do think that. When it came to the host, because keep in mind, Amy Rose was a commentator. Right. Gray Drake was a commentator. Roth came in sometimes. Roth right, would right. be a commentator. Right. But myself, Chrisley, we were t- there to uh, Brooke, uh, Brooke Taylor. I remember. Uh, yeah, 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 she was a she was a host. So we were not uh, supposed to chime in. But because I knew what we were talking about right. when I could, when I felt like it was appropriate, I would never try and overstep anything, especially okay. at that point, because I had no cred or confidence. Right. Um, but when I could, I would chime in. And and I think John was receptive to it because he kept me around. Yeah. And then you, didn't you and transition? Then, no, no, you didn't. I thought you transitioned into. Oh, you were, so you were a host all the way through. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Look at this. I'm learning yeah. a lot of stuff. So, yeah. you're, so you, then what, what happened? Why did you then get fired the first time? Because um, John said uh, the day we came back from Comic-Con, everybody has to come in and put this app on their computer. Okay. And I said, well, I'm doing the blood cast. I'm supposed to do the blood, record the blood cast with Ryan. Um, that's on a Monday. But um, I'm supposed to be in the office on Tuesday. Can I just download it at home? And uh, and then, like, we can double, I'll come in maybe a little early right. and we can double check it. And he said, no, everyone has to be here on Monday. And I said, John, I've already booked this thing. And and also keep in mind, I'm trying to grow my brand. I'm right. trying to network, meet other people. I had no digital and you contacts. Were not full time. No. It was just a, right. I was a right. and I Freelance. was not scheduled to come in that day. Right. And he was saying because the bloodcast was un, as a guest mm-hmm. was unpaid. It might as well have been like going shopping to him. Those mm. were his exact words. Really? You might as well be telling me you're going shopping. So then you and have And I the... said, John, I'm not canceling on him. Right. And and I, I'm not gonna do it. And I really and he was like, Well then I'm gonna let you go. And I was like, I I re and my voice never raised. I said, John, please don't like really I really let's not do this. I really want to keep working at AMC. Right. I really don't want to. And he said to me, I told you when I hired you, when I say jump, you say how high. And and by the way, every man I've ever told that story to says, if somebody ever said that to me, I'd tell them to go fuck themselves. Right. And so you said, and I, fuck no, it, I'm out. No, oh, no. I said, John, I'm not going to cancel. So please don't do this. And he was like, I'm sorry, Clark, you're fired. And I was like, okay. So then you leave. So no, this was on the phone. This was on the phone. Okay, so but you leave. You leave AMC. Oh yeah, that's then, it. Okay, I'm so done. The, and this is around 2013, 2014. It was in the summer of 2013. 2013. Okay, because I started in April of 2014. Yes. So, um, and I can say I'll, what I'll say this: someone that you were dating at the time. Yes. Had said to me, "Hey, you know, just to let you know, I got a phone call from Clark. You might want to think about it before you go into." AMC, just oh, look, look, yeah. look at the situation. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so I I did, and I will say... Just go in with eyes wide open. And I did, and I will say... And, and you know, I have a very, I have a very different experience. You know, I, I came in as as a uh, contributor, and, and I've said this to... And I've said this to you many times. My relationship with, with John was fine from start of to course. finish. Of um, course. He treated... He, I, didn't ha- I never had that type of relationship with him. Sure. But... You then wind up leaving AMC in general. So then, but do you say, because I know you at that point, that probably motivated you more than anything else. Well, I was just like, fuck, what do I do? Yeah. Because, but fortunately we had just done Comic-Con. So I had made friends. I had met people at IGN. I had met people over here. I had met people over there. So, and Ryan 
brought Turn, me onto yeah. the blood cast full time, full time. You know, I, we weren't making any money. We weren't getting paid. Right. But like I was doing a show. So that meant you get your name Na- out there. That's more. right. Yeah. And I was a geek nation. So I would see you. I would see Claire Kramer. I would see and Aaron and I and Kristen were working on this thing called the Pop Fix, which mm-hmm. was like a little brand we tried to start. So we were creating that content and we were m- mingling there. And then the blood cast was going. So like Ryan, I was meeting people through Ryan, which was great. And then in January of 2014, okay. so because this all happened in the summer, uh, July of 2013. 20, okay. So January 2014, my friend Jason, once again, right. directing for Nerdist. He gets the card. <laughs> he gets the he card at the holidays. Card. Yeah, 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 he absolutely yeah, yeah. does, yeah, yeah. yes. So he's directing for Nerdist at the time, and I'm a huge fan of Nerdist. Right, And right. so he this. says, they're looking for writers. I really think you should submit. Yeah. And I was like, great. So what I did was I sent them an email saying, look, film student, this, AMC Movie Talk, Bloodcast. Um, I, I can write. Here are some scripts, but I am mostly a host. Right. They called me, and they were like, we want you to start writing for us um, as a writer. So I said, great. And then within two or three months, they were having me do red carpets and stuff like that. So okay. that's when the Nerdist thing. So you start to build your rep really there because yes. you get more on camera. You're not just hosting. Correct. You're doing more stuff. You're getting your opinion out there yeah, a little yeah. bit more. And you're starting to really show off the knowledge that we all know that you have. Yes. Um, so you do that, and you're there for how long? I mean, Nerdist still calls me to do stuff right. for him. But that's consistent. Because I remember when I met you, I was like, I mean, not met you, but when, when I really saw how much you uh-huh. were, I didn't really remember that you were doing AMC, because I, by the time it, I started. It was pretty fast yeah, and by the early. Time, yes, I had heard after I had started that you had been there. I didn't know, I didn't hear anything about if there was falling outs or any of that kind of stuff. I, I mean, obviously, you hear the fans talking, man, the Man of Steel stuff. Right, which is, which once is, again, right. not... Neither not here accurate. nor there. No. Right. Not accurate at all. So, nope. And that came in, especially when you're hosting, there's just a discussion about Man of Steel and then it just got thrown to no, you. No, that was um, Clark, you are a big super. You love the Superman movies and all of this. You, me, and Schne- John. Uh, Campia, John Schnepp, and Clark are going to sit down and do the review, the reactions, the hour long piece. So that so, was so a whole did, separate but piece. He, so he did bring you in sometimes. Yes, okay, absolutely. okay, got it, got it. So then that was why you came in here. You made your opinions. You didn't like the film. You said you said it. You caught some gruff from it from the the fans. Which right. I I mean, listen, I I see it. Uh, we see it even more so now. But you know what's funny about that is. Those were really the early days of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. That video was like the biggest video AMC had ever put out yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Um, but also what's funny is like if you actually watch the video, it's just me being like, this wasn't my favorite. And and it's like <laughs> it's so not salacious. It doesn't surprise me because, because Ellis, when we did our review, we had seen it. I don't know, like two weeks before anybody had seen it, right? So we put the review out, and I really liked it. I still like the film a lot. He didn't like it that much, said it, and the fans lit him up. And they hadn't even seen the movie yet. And they lit him up. And I remember thinking, this is so new. This is weird. Like, I never see, because our audience, the Schmoville audience, right. right, was always like a place of positivity and love and everything, too. And we'd never seen anything like that. And that was the start of this kind of like fanboy, like ultimate fanboy stuff that we had seen. And I remember the two people in the – there were a couple of people in the crossfires. You and Mark from Man of Steel, Catherine Reitman got hit big for – I think it was Amazing Spider-Man. Mm. Um, those were the times I said, whoa, that's that, – that's, that's, I'd never seen anything like that. And then I see it every other Tuesday now. But um, but anyway, so you're working for Nerdist now. You're moving up, and you're you're doing more things. Um, are you paying the bills just from Nerdist at that point? Are you still living at that house? No, okay, <laughs> I got okay. let go from AMZ, and okay. then I got let go from the house. Oh wow! Very fast. So things were going to shits for a little uh-huh. bit. Uh huh. Yeah. And then I had like a relationship fall apart. That wow. And it was just like, oh, it was rough. everything was going. So how do you? All right. Yeah. So I mean, you put all that together when you have the job that you like, and this first, really, the first time you're getting into the space, gone. Yep. Um, this house, this sweet setup. Gone. How long is the relationship? Not long, but it was significant. And you, you right? This is the guy we, we talked. You, you no, re- it wasn't that one. Okay, but you were really into this dude. I was. And and gone. So all three, three strikes. Everything about packing it up and going back home. No. Never. That is the thing. That's the difference between New York and L.A. For me, yeah. was I figured out really fast that New York was not 
for me. Um, no matter how bad it got in LA, this is it. The, I, I love living here. Okay. I don't, I know you don't hear that from like people who are not from LA very often, Sometimes but like, you do. I mean, there are people who, who really catch I on. I love to it, it here. Yeah. I yeah. love it here. Okay. So that, so it wasn't a matter, you were going to figure it out because this is where you want to be. Yes. But it was a dark time. All right. So you get hit hard. How do you bounce out of it? Because you, I don't, I mean, I've talked to, um, you know, last Roka and Ken are very open about it and I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been down this path for depression does oh, it yeah. set, does it does it set in how do you get out of it like what do you what do you do so what's hard about depression is that sometimes even you don't understand what's going on yeah like for me so for instance like sometimes you'll just be like why can't i blank right your brain like your your um it's a brick wall everywhere you go yeah, yeah. and it's but it's just like you don't even understand what's happening, right? right? right. And um, I will say, I started going to therapy, uh, I want to say in like 2011, okay. maybe, ish, um, and have not stopped. What was the initial reason for that? Does that was that relationship type no, stuff or just in general? It was, family I, stuff? I had family stuff. Okay. I had needed to go to therapy probably since I was eight years old. Oh, wow. Like, I mean, just, just family dynamic being tough. This is why it sucks that we have such limited time. Because I, I, we could talk for like two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, all right. So the family stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna do two parts. Okay. We're gonna we'll do, do two, two parts. parts. We'll do a part two. So the family stuff. Yeah. So it's like stuff that has been going on forever. Yeah. That manifests into all of your other relationships. Yeah. I was doing. I know what I'm doing. Like, the difference is, like, you're. We're. We're all recreating our family dynamic. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. We have roles, we have this, we have that. We're trying to get away from the, our, what our family dynamic was and create our own. Yeah, and yes. I think a lot of times, though, we recreate it trying to fix it. True. You know, yeah. and then the, the good thing for me is over the last handful of years, like actually working on this, I can see the change. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, in I can't remember how long I've been on medication, but um, I take medication and it it help, it, it, it has does. changed everything. Okay. Now I was very resistant to it for a long time because I didn't want to be a zombie. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to turn into another person. Yeah. And I think and also no one was pushing this on me. It was honestly a suggestion of like maybe you should consider when you're working with a therapist every week for however many years, and then you realize that they're telling you like. This is more than just like this is a chemical thing, right? right. And and I they can I can tell like you know what I mean and and maybe just something even if it's not a lot something right. small would really help balance. And you what out. is it? Is it more was it more depression stuff or was it more like was it like fits or like what, I was what? more I'm dep I'm way heavier on depression. Depression. Okay. Yeah, okay. for okay. sure. Like not like people say like not getting out of bed, but like I mean there were times before I started going to therapy and even in the beginning where like I just couldn't get out of bed. I, really? I physically Didn't want to move. I, I just was too and it was like I would look out the window and I would all I would think or see was everyone outside this window is doing something. They have friends, they have a yeah. network, they have meetings, they have a job, they have life, and I have none of it. Yeah, where does that stem from though, you think though? Like why, like what happened, I mean, is it, is it again, childhood stuff to where, was it kind of a loner type thing for you when you were younger? No, it's just a matter of like, because it's, it's the striving, because I feel like we're similar mm -hmm. in the fact to where, for me, I, and I've said this before on shows too, like I have an idea of where I want something mm -hmm. to be. And if it's if it only gets here, even though this is a high platform, I feel like I failed. Like I said this before on another show, I feel like like Schmoes, like people, oh, that's so good. I feel like Schmoes was a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Schmodown right now is a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Collider Live, because it's not at 100,000 views already, is a failure. Like I feel like, you know, that's, that's the way that I get, because very similar to what you're saying is, I look out the window and I say, Okay, well, I know that I can do that, mm -hmm. and I know those people are doing that. And how come I can't provide that for my family? How come I can't do that for my wife? How come I, like, mm -hmm. that, is it that kind of shit? No, for me, it's more I think feeling like I have no, like I need to be farther than I am. Yeah. But but like meaning, um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a teenager because oh, look at all the stuff oh, I, I can't do when I I'm see. a teenager. When I'm new to LA, I'm going, God, but I just I just need the chance. Like, I don't know the people. Right. I don't have the... And you want it before you, ha you need it yet, right before it's time. It's time. I see, I see. Which has been really hard for me. But it's also uh, being somewhere 
wanting to be the place you're not yeah. and not looking at the place you are. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean settling or slowing down. Or it doesn't mean settling or compromising necessarily. It just means, you know, we all struggle with this, I think, but like looking at where you're at and going, okay, well, this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. What, you know, of course I want more, but what can I do with where I'm at right now right. and move the ball forward, you know? And it's just like, I think it's a perspective thing. And I still struggle with that all the time. But you're better with it. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yes. All right. So, and you do that and you're going through and you're helping yourself to get through it and yeah. you're working on it. And as you are doing this during that time, the, the nerdist time and... Is it around like the 2015 era when you come back to, um, I don't know if it was AMC, I think it was Collider at this point, but like, so how long in between, what's, are there any other significant jumps there? Because you were already starting to become a presence in the, in the, in the online community. I had been asked to come back to AMC Movie Talk before. Oh, you were? Yes. Okay. John had asked me to come back. There was no, uh, like big conversation. Right. Pundit or host? This pundit point. as a pundit yeah 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 okay. as you, a guest on the show are you yes. hesitant when he asks or you say no i'm ready to, i can do it mm -hmm. you, that, you, so not hesitant okay so you're so you, i shouldn't have been let go in the first place right well that's right what, truly i was like yeah but that's what i meant that's what i meant more so is because you were let go to like i'm not going back some people would say i'm not going back so there. this is what sucked about that situation yeah. was that was a place that i needed to be mm -hmm. and i hate that i was in that position i really resent that i needed that outlet, mm -hmm. but I did. And I also really resent that AMC Movie Talk did blow up right after I got after let go. Right, right. I mean, you know, I wish social media didn't matter, but it does. Yeah. I didn't get jobs because my numbers were lower. Right. It wasn't, I don't even think, a stigma. I really think it was just like, oh yeah, she's kind of like over doing her thing, whatever. Right, right. Whereas the people who were there, I saw, their numbers going up and up and up and getting to do things that, you know, opportunities with this brand. Right. And I was just. So then you're like, well, I, yeah, of course I want to come back because I need to start building these numbers up and I got to make sure I can build my brand up. And also, it's great experience. It's great tape. Yeah. And more people, you get to newer people Absolutely. in there too, get to be on camera with people so you haven't been on before. So it was all very like okay. professional. So you do it. So you come back. Um, and this was, so it was AMC when mm -hmm. you came back. Okay. And then right, that's right around the time where the transition also happens. Correct. Now. Right. So. And then you start to make the move with Collider, and I'm I'm there at that point. Yes. Yeah. And with and because I remember that when you came back, because I do remember the conversations where because again to give to for credit for for John, John was the one who, who was saying we need to bring Clark back, like you know, because he wasn't. I can be honest and say that when I was there, I never heard him say anything about that time at AMC. No, I mean well, he wouldn't have a reason to because yeah. I did not. That is the story I told is what well, how happened. it went down. It is the most. Lackluster, boring, <laughs> it's the most it boring is. story right. ever. Right. But it, and and it wasn't scrappy and it wasn't war of words and just it, that's what it is. It was just take I'm not it. canceling. Right. And that's and that was it. And so it was a he, power move too, by the way. Yeah. On his part. You think so? Of course. Because yeah. if I can get her to cancel oh. this, what else can I? Right. And you didn't do it. No. You stood your ground, but you come back. Yep. Um. And now you're now you're involved a lot more. You're doing movie talk. You're on bit that's when nightmares starts so happening so nightmares got greenlit when john was not at collider i know and that was when that was me and uh dennis correct um yeah so that was because i remember when that when that came about we wanted to do a horror yep. thing for so long yep. we talked about it um no i remember that for sure but the other thing that i have to bring up yeah. because let's see what 4 30 we got to talk about a little bit so okay. I was sitting, it was at Movie Talk, mm -hmm. and, and I had come in and I had said, you know, we do this thing on Schmoes, this this trivia contest. And and I said, and and we were it was before we went on air, and I said, take a look. And I'm showing you this contest. I don't remember who was playing. And you're sitting there and you're answering everything. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm going, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching you, and you're like, that one, that I'm like, damn it, she's good. Mm -hmm. And then I said, would you ever want to do it? And you're like, Yeah. And that's how the, the origin of Classy Clark Wolf began. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, we're going to start doing this on Collider. I'll get you a match, and we'll have to put you up against Makuga. Right. Um, because the answer for, for me, if someone asked me, I had no idea. Did you think that it would turn into what the hell it turned into when we started doing this? I mean, I, I didn't know. I feel like the match against Makuga went really well my way, yeah. especially for, like, the first one, right? The, my first like coming out yeah, yeah, and yeah. like whatever. So, so that 
it going really well for me. I don't know if I was anticipating that. Um, but I did, I think I was anticipating like, yeah, I want to play. I want to play this game. Yeah, yeah. I think I like movie trivia. And you caught the bug. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, I do think that I, I got, I went for my first title shot too soon. Again, well, I mean, but the thing was at that time the league was so young. Oh, you were, it's... you were three and zero. Yeah. It was Dan was the champ, and what people don't realize about that match when when you go back is that Dan and you were supposed to play at like four o'clock mm-hmm. at a day, and then I got a phone call from. Uh, from someone uh-huh. who said, um, Dan can't be there at that time. And I was like, well, but he, he already booked it like two weeks. And he said, can't do it. Um, and I was like, my, well, the match is supposed to be like tomorrow. I'm like, I'll see what I can do. I get a phone call and then it's, he can do it in the morning if you guys can do it in the morning. And I'm like, okay, we'll see if we can move in the morning. And instead of the big, huge crowd we were supposed to have, <laughs> right. There was no one in the crowd. Yeah. It was. Oh, it was like nine a.m. Nine a.m. in the morning. It was so it was, early. It was pushed, and and yeah, and and it's funny because when you talk to Dan about it too, he was he knows that it we got shuffled around and everything too, and um, it just was it, it was just a very different time. Also. Yeah, yeah, it was, and also the biggest thing I would say is like if you look back, um, that was the time where round one was two different sets of questions. So right. if you pick right. wrong, you could in theory fuck your whole game up. Yes, and I did. You did. I right. picked wrong because I knew you knew his all questions. of. Yeah. Dan's I questions. Know, right, right. But I, I tanked mine. Right. Well, it's funny about that. Is I used to talk to you about the the rules and mm-hmm. everything too all the time, mm-hmm. and we used, you helped me kind of. The come same questions stuff. was my big one of my bigger yeah, ones that yeah, I and that, that was, I felt, and that, and that led to people don't realize that I do listen to the competitors quite often, and yeah. and one of the things too that I I will mention on the air here too is um so fast forward you know two years later and Clark's playing with Rachel Cushing for the championship. Um, the day of was the day I saw uh, my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I went home and I um, and you know I went home to Florida, and we and my mom and my other brother Brian had asked me. Um, I was supposed to. We were supposed to. You know, we they did like an open casket for the friends and family for um, uh, on Saturday. They were going to do that first, and then and then the majority of people it was closed casket. So. I was prepared to see him on Saturday. So my mom calls me on Friday morning. My brother called me on Friday morning, and he says, Mom wants you to come with us now. Um, and so I'm like, of course. So I wasn't mentally prepared for it. I was preparing myself on Saturday. So I go. It destroys me. I mean, just destroys me. Um, I'm there for my my brother and, and my mom, but I'm, I'm wrecked. And I go, i got to get my mind off of this. I go, i got to get my mind off. So then I start texting Alex, our, our PA. But I was like, just give me updates on the matches. Let me know what's going on. So it was a few different matches that was happening. And then I'm sitting there listening. And you and I have been on such an emotional journey, as has myself and Rachel Cushing, too. Um, and I had so much respect for both Brianne and mm-hmm. Brian for jumping in there and doing it. But there was something I was, I was attached to the really you guys, you know, and listening to it. Um, and then you guys won. And I heard you won, and I called you mm-hmm. immediately. I couldn't, and I and I and I and I don't, I'm not afraid to say it. I was I, I broke down mm-hmm. in the middle of the, the call, and I had to let you know how much that meant to me for what you guys were doing in that moment, how much you helped build the league, how that what that meant to me at that moment in that time. So, and I know we've talked about it mm-hmm. on the phone, but I wanted to thank you on air as well too. No, I appreciate that, and it meant a lot to me too, because I mean, I we both knew what was going on, and we knew where you were, right. and um, we knew how hard all of that was for you, and and you know, and I certainly like really, really, really wanted you to be there, yeah. you know, but but I also feel like you know, if you couldn't have been there. That's probably the best case. That was the best case. And it, <laughs> it was good. I was, I mean, I was, I like, I cleaned my dad's kitchen. I cleaned it like, like scrubbing it down and everything. And while I was doing, I was listening to music, looking for updates, and just it just kept my mind off. And I was getting pictures mm-hmm. of you guys and everything too. And and it was cool. It was really cool. And it was a nice moment. And it was a, it, what. That's the thing though too that where, where I want to get into with this because again it's like, yeah, what time is it here? In the four thirty six. So we the the thing though is how important it was because you were really, Gray Drake was like the first woman mm-hmm. to kind of come, well, Alicia Malone, Gray Drake, Katie Sackhoff, Bonnie, in that first iteration of what the show was. And then we had some teams, but as what it really became, you were the first woman to really play in with a bunch of dudes mm-hmm. for, for when we started at Collider, and that was tough. I know mm-hmm. it was tough. And to build it and become like this, I get messages from women and little girls all the time that say, Clark Wolf, 
She was the one. She's the reason I watched the Schmo down this and that. So it also was a, it was it's big that you guys were the first ones to win that. And people don't realize you know you hear about all oh, this just movie trivia. It means so much more now because of what we made it. So did it mean a lot to you and Rachel not only winning but because you won you know the first women to win championships? Yeah, because I think it all honestly like you don't amass a knowledge of trivia if you haven't been doing it your whole life. Yeah. And I think that growing up, growing up's hard for everyone, but I also think like for me, growing up, you know, in the bougie suburbs of the south as a girl who likes Batman movies right. and like, you know, my pa- and and also there was like a there was a lot of, you know, there was some dark personal stuff like family stuff and so it was also like, you know, I I felt like movies I dove into film and and loved it and that was my happy place, but I also like got I, you know, got I turned into a darker, just like a darker person. And so I think that that was all there. And it's all very much like really wrapped up inside of who I am. And so the reason I bring that up is because this isn't a casual, it, it is literally a lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. It's a lifelong journey of consuming and retaining and studying and admiring and appreciating a a medium of, of art. And so I, it really does mean a lot because my whole life I have felt and been told, you know, like being a nerd isn't, is cool now. It wasn't for a long time. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I had some you know, horrible John Hughes, like I got picked on and bullied for being a nerd. Like that wasn't it. Um, I got bullied for other reasons, but that, that wasn't it. So, um, so the point is though, that I always felt different. Mm -hmm. I always felt othered. Um, you know, boys certainly never like, you know, I'm like watching Star Wars and Batman and, and like weird shit. And it's like guys in the South were, I think they were kind of like, I don't understand this. Right. It's like, Um, like, well, you're kind of one of us. Yeah. Like, and and also, but it's also kind of like your friend is like one of them, like your friend, your friend is pretty. Your friend is likes girl stuff. Your friend is like, this is, this makes more sense to us. And so it was all a lot of like sidelining, I think. So, and and then being studying film and film school and like being one of a, a handful of girls and the whole thing. So, so I say that to say that, yes, it does matter to me because there, if I had seen a Rachel Cushing or a Gray Drake um, or Marquia or pick, pick, right, you right. know, like as a kid and found the Schmodown and been like, oh, there are other girls right, who right. are cool. The audience is cheering for them. Right. They, they are, they, and they know this stuff and they love this stuff and they take it seriously right. and they like fight their fighters. Yeah. Like, I, what? That would have been crazy for me as yeah, a little kid. Yeah, well, because the Shire Wolves, man, the Shire Wolves have become a symbol. We had families that that, that watched the Shire Wolves mm-hmm. and how much it means to mm-hmm. them. And the Shire Wolves became a thing because you and Rachel have become like a symbol. You really have become like the symbol for, um, I think, not just for women. I think that was it was – I said it on the Schmodown Rundown. Your post-interview is the most important post-interview that I've ever seen because th- we've been getting those questions forever. It's like, why don't we just have a women's championship? And you said there is no women's league. We are the league. That was and which was so true. It's not the UFC. It's not boxing. Like right. there's a separate. It's not WWE. There's a, there's. It's not a physical thing. It's yeah. a it's a mental thing. And um and I think that that is what that proved. And that's what that moment proved. And I think that that's what we have accomplished together doing this thing. So. Mm-hmm. Moving away from that, before um, we wrap up this portion of it, and then definitely get to a part two. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one thing that I will ask you about, so you can choose to talk about it or not, is: so last time we spoke, you were not in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You were having issues, kind of back and forth with, you know, it was it was because you're so driven in, in work and the relationships. It was dated. Some guys been some interest in some. Some of them were working out. That is not the case anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so how's it going? Can you talk a little bit about sure. your relationship? And then, and then because it started off rocky and then goes – and now it's now it's like perfect. Well, I mean, I, I think that it started out as dating. And dating. I think that it started out as – I don't think that he necessarily – like we met on Bumble, even though we had a ton of friends in common. Right. And we had never met. So um, – 
uh, we met on Bumble, and I don't think that when we went out on our first date that he was <laughs> anticipating that he'd be at the Hollywood Bowl with my parents watching John Williams. That was the first date. Labor Day weekend. No, no, oh. I'm saying like in the future. Oh, in the Do you future. know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't think he was Understood. anticipating. It was just a date, and it, then it ultimately turns into it, something very serious. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And I mean, I think you know, like, um, uh, it's it's not actually. I will say this: this summer was rough. For a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. as I know you know, mm -hmm. um, just and and I was burned out, and work was weird and hard, and Schnepp passing was was very rough and hard, and there was just a lot going on, and um, I was not, I just was not in a good place, yeah. and again like we were talking about earlier, sometimes you don't realize it until you're in it. Right. And you're like, oh God. You're emotionally, you were exhausted. I, I was ex exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I was having some emotional outbursts. Like I right. was getting angry and snapping a lot. Yeah, I remember. I think, I mean, I remember, I think there was a time, I mean, first of all, you and I, when we were Schnapp, I mean, we, you were very comforting to me when I was there because that, when I was with John in the uh, in the room, that it hit me really hard. Mm -hmm. And I came out and you were there. You were very comforting. But I also remember there was around that same time, I don't remember what it was. I don't I don't think it was a schmo down. There was something. You didn't necessarily snap at me, but there was something that was it, it was a tone in your voice and I was like, Oh, she's going through something right mm. now. Because it wasn't because I didn't take it personally. Yeah. I could just tell that there's because I I talked about it on Collider Live yesterday. I went through something the other day and mm -hmm. I just went off like we get through it we don't realize it yeah. yeah and so when you're in it and i was like okay this is not fair yeah like and 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 he should not be bearing the he was catching the brunt sort of yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and and it and i was seriously like really struggling with that yeah. like what is going on and why am i behaving this way and of course i told i said like like what just short with him kind of snapping at him and yeah, stuff yeah yeah, yeah. And, or or if there are conversations that needed to be had i was having them in the wrong way right. like coming at it from a play a reactionary place sure not just having to say hey can we talk about exactly. this exactly right. yes or hey this happened you were like, looking for a fight well, I found one. I don't yeah. know if I was looking for one, but like I was taking the opportunity, I suppose, right. to just okay. blah. Right. Um, so for thankfully, like, you know, and, and I did say like, this is about m me. I don't know why I'm acting this way. I'm, I'm not making excuses, right. but I'm processing a lot. Yeah. And he totally was like, it's okay. It's okay. Like not, not pushover. Of course. But let's figure out how to make it work. Totally. Yeah. Yes. And 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 was super patient. And so coming through that, I think, was really important. Yeah. And um and I'm really really grateful for that. Because and that's kind of mean a lot though too for that because you know a lot of times sometimes people won't stick around. Sometimes. That's people... what I was terrified of. Yeah. So I think on top of like having these real life emotional things, whether yeah. it was work, whether it was schnep, whether it was whatever, the fear of oh my god. Did I, did I fuck it up? Did I just fuck this yeah, up too? Because right. I'm not processing the other stuff. Right. And is he gonna bail? Is he gonna? Which, you know, I mean, and you hope if you've been with somebody, if you've been dating for a year or whatever, you hope it's just like okay, it's worth more than that to you than right. just like cut and run. And I'm sure he also he understood, you know, with the with Schnepp and everything going on, and 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 I've met him. Um, yeah. I met him a couple times too, and I think I and I said this too, like. Initially, I didn't know what was going on, and I was like, I don't know. Yeah, no, and you know. were right, by the way. Yeah, you I, coached me through a lot of yeah, I said, boy I, stuff. I said, I don't know, react in this particular way, and then he came around. Yeah. And then I'd seen him so many different times in the way you guys are now, and I think it was probably because he was also didn't know how to handle the the fan attention this. and that kind of this stuff, and now he does. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like him. I think he's a, I think he's a good dude, and I'm, I'm glad you're happy. And FSU guy. He's an FSU guy. He that... went to grad school That's for right. film at me FSU. That. You told me that. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. So. Okay. All right. So it is. It, we are past our limit, unfortunately. But what I do, what we'll want to do is because it's it's um it's only fair. I've been grilling here, Clark, and as you guys know, I implemented this. I think the first time I did it was with Katie. Um, Clark is going to have a couple questions that she can ask me to close out the episode. Anything she wants to know, and we're going to close out there, and then we're going to do a part two. So if there's yes. anything you want to know, um, please go ahead. Okay. Well, I guess what I would say is. Um, Sometimes when I'm burned out or when I'm tired, uh, just overall, I, I'm i like, why why am I doing this? Like, why is this yeah. my life? Yeah. Um, not talking about working in entertainment, I know why, uh, but like the thing I'm actually doing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, what is this even for? Right. Who even likes this? Who even is watching this? I'm putting so much in and I don't even know like why. Right. Do you ever feel that way? All the time. 
I mean, all the time. then what is it for? <laughs> um, I think the potential. I think the potential is what what I, I try to go for. I mean, I think that it's a matter of, I think that there's things, I think what we were just talking about before, I think the fact that I know that that my seven-year-old daughter runs around and says, Classy Clark Wolf and and classy, and uh, and the Crusher, Rachel Cushing, and, and says, I want to be a trivia player when I get older, you know, like, to know that not just someone in my house who, who watches these things that there's that that's out there that we're making an impact that I get messages from people all the time about how Cloud Alive gets them through their days and things I think that that's what it's all about um, but I think that I'm in that same place to where it's like why is a show that I know that does so it is so good only does this forty thousand why is a show like the Schmodown which I know what I can do with it is only doing 80,000 and can and, and doesn't have the budget that I need. Like it, it's 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 that, that that drives me nuts and it's like I can't and I can't just do one particular thing, sit there forever and do it and just repeat repeat repeat. I got to keep changing it up or I, I lose my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else is that? It? Um when can I meet your wife? Have you never met my wife? That's crazy. No. Nope. That is crazy. Um, you know what it is? It's also it's because she's uh, right now. She she doesn't come around a lot down over here in, in Burbank too, because with the two kids, of and too, we don't have we don't have a lot of help. We have no help. Of course, a lot of help. We have no help. Um, I would love for that because I think that I've talked about you so much when it comes to like when we because she watches The Bachelor, and, oh, right. uh, and, and I was just like, <laughs> my gosh, she looks like Clark Wall. Um, and yeah, I would love that. I think you guys would get along pretty well too because she's she's a no nonsense type of woman as well too. And I think that I've always I've always got along well with with brutally honest people, and I, and like that's 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 the type of person that I I can't stand fake. Um, I can't stand someone who tells you like one thing. Oh yeah, that's that's wonderful, and then and then turns to their back and says that's shit. You're the type of person not shit. And I think or that, that, I don't care for this, or it's not my you, favorite. You would tell I would me, not be like this is shit. You would tell me uh, particular things. If not, you said Clark is this shit, I'd I'm be like, talking, well, <laughs> it's not great. Like for, for, yeah. for, it's not great. I don't care for it. <laughs> Like what was the, the quote the other day? I, I'm, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. Or something Whatever like that. it was, which I is amazing. Know. Which which I would like to ask before we started. You're like, all of this is so crazy to me. Like the Collider Live. Because you didn't know what you were walking into no. the other day. <laughs> I did not. I mean, <laughs> you, I you guess. We were talking about movies the whole time. No, nah, who knows? Yeah. Whatever. Um, but that's is that everything? That's everything you want to know? Well, for part one. Part one. That's it. Okay, so Clark Wolf, and, and the big thing, too, is tell me a little bit about this Instagram. What's yes. going on? Okay, so please, if you haven't already or if you're interested, please follow me on Instagram, at Clark Wolf, Clark with an E, Wolf with an E. I am going to Fantastic Fest. I think by the time you hear it, I will be there. Um, and I'm going to be seeing a ton of movies, new movies, movies that probably won't come out for a long time, some that will. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lot more video reactions and video stuff on Instagram. So that's... So and and I'll be covering for Sci-Fi Fangirls. Um, okay. So yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. There's gonna be some fun stuff there, and I'm really trying to um, to utilize Instagram and Instagram TV more. So please give me a follow there, because I, I the, some of the stuff I'll be seeing at Fantastic Fest is like Halloween and and that oh, you know cool. seeing that a little early, but then also seeing like some sneaky movies that maybe like we don't know are gonna right. blow up yet because right. um, we haven't seen them yet. So yeah, it's it's a great festival. I love love it and it's my happy place all right so check out clark on instagram as always it's always so much fun talking to you. you i don't like that we talk for so short i know well i seriously am not kidding i will i want to do let's do a part yeah. two like we'll it's get really that kind on of part three at this point yeah that's true yeah so um thank you guys for listening make sure that you subscribe over at uh, apple podcasts on the uh, one on one with Christian Harloff feed. You can also get Mark Riley's show, which you also you will get you get a double dose of Clark Wolf. So last week you probably heard oh, Clark yeah. Wolf on the Riley Roundtable. If you're listening to it on audio, or if you're on the podcast channel, you can go to YouTube, the Collider Podcast Network. Go over there. You can watch a video. You can see um, myself and Clark here shooting the shit, or you can just listen to us. You want to go listen on the drive? If you're on Android, Podcast One app. All of these things. And also, what's Sending the Wolf coming back on? Uh, this season. And, oh, we got to get you on the books for that, too. Love to. Yeah. Or when I said this season, sorry, I meant this fall. This fall. This fall. This fall, Sending the Wolf comes back out. Clark Wolf, my pal. Thank you. We'll see you next time. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it. 
subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows and we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.